lesson 15, I will find common units or number of units to compare to fractions. In lesson 14, we figured out how we could find a common numerator or a common denominator in order to be able to compare fractions. And today we're going to continue that strategy in lesson 15. So go ahead and get out your problem set. And we're going to draw a few area models, but we're not going to draw all area models to find this equivalent fraction. We're also going to be using some multiplication too. All right, so you're going to take a look at number one, and it says draw an area model for each pair of fractions and use it to compare the two fractions by writing a greater than, less than, or equal to symbol on the line. The first two have been partly done for you. Each rectangle represents one whole. So let's take a look at A. They've already told us that one half is less than two thirds. And you can see what they did. They took a half and they partitioned it. into three parts to make sixes, and then they took thirds and they partitioned them in half to make sixes. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to shade these because I didn't shade these. So we started out with one half, and this one started out as two thirds. Okay, so then we ended up with one half is the same as three sixes, and two-thirds is the same as four-sixes. So one-half, or three-sixes, is actually less than two-thirds, or four-sixes. All right, so now let's take a look at B. So we have four-fifths, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shade four out of five, and I've got three-fourths, so I'm going to shade three out of four. Okay, so I want to take the fifths, and I want to divide them into four, so I'm going to draw three horizontal lines like this. So now each one of my fifths has been divided into four parts. One, two, three, four. And I want to take my fourths and I want to turn them into fifths. So I'm going to divide them by drawing the same lines that are up here. I'm going to draw, draw four lines. One, two, three, four. So I took each fourth and I divided it into one, two, three, four, five parts. So I had four fifths and I took four and five, and I multiplied them by four, which gives me 16 twentieths. Oh, that's kind of squished. All right, and then over here, I'm going to write this one over here. I had three fourths, and I took the numerator and the denominator, and I multiplied them by five. I divided them into five parts. And that gave me 15 twentieths. So now I have common denominators. 4 fifths is the same thing as 16 twentieths. And 3 fourths is the same as 15 twentieths. Well, because 16 is more than 15, then that means that 16 twentieths is greater than 15 twentieths. So 4 fifths is greater than 3 fourths. Okay? All right, let's take a look at C. All right, so we're going to draw <clears throat> our model. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make these into fists like this. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. So that's one, two, three, four, five. This is why I usually use the cheat tool because they look so messy. All right, now I'm going to divide these into seven parts. I'm going to draw six lines, okay? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So let's shade. I'm going to shade three fifths, and I'm going to shade four sevenths. All right, now, so I'm going to take my fifths, and I'm going to divide them into seven parts. So I'm going to draw six vertical lines. Three, four, five, six. And I'm going to divide my sevenths into fifths by drawing horizontal lines. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 
21 30 fifths and here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25, 30 fifths. Now let's see how we can get here just using multiplication. I can take 3 fifths and I can take 4 sevenths. I take the fifths and multiply them by 7. And I take the sevenths and I multiply them by 5. And look at what I get. Oops, that should be a 7. And now I have a common denominator. They both have a denominator of 35. So I can see that 21 35ths is actually less than 25 35ths. So 3 fifths is less than 4 sevenths. Okay, for these last three, we're not going to draw the model. We're just going to use the multiplication. So I've got 3 sevenths and I've got 2 sixes. Okay, now I could, well, there's nothing I can do to 3 to get to 2 and nothing I can do to 7 to get to 6. So let's talk about what we've been doing here. We've been taking the sevenths and multiplying them by 6. And then I'm going to take the sixes and I'm going to multiply them by 7. Notice how I'm multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number. You have to to have an equivalent fraction. So now I have 18 40 seconds and 14 40 seconds. Well, 18 is greater than 14. So 3 sevenths is greater than 2 sixes. All right, let's take a look at 5 eighths and 6 ninths. So I have 5 eighths and 6 ninths. So I'm going to take the eighths and I'm going to multiply them by 9. And I'm going to take the ninths and I'm going to multiply them by 8. So now I have 45 70 seconds, <laughs> sounds funny, and 48 70 seconds. Well, 45 is less than 48. Therefore, 5 eighths is less than 6 ninths. All right, last one. I have 2 thirds and 3 fourths. I'm going to take my thirds and multiply them by 4. And I'm going to take my fourths and I'm going to multiply them by 3. Now I will have a common denominator. I have 8 twelfths and 9 twelfths. Well, 8 is less than 9. So 8 twelfths is less than 9 twelfths. So 2 thirds is less than 3 fourths. Okay, we're pretty much going to do the exact same thing on the back as we did on the front. I'd like for you to try to do one of these by yourself. See if you can figure out how to use multiplication to, to compare these two fractions. If you're a little bit nervous about doing this one by yourself, you can do it with me. Or if you feel pretty confident, go ahead and pause the video and try to do it by yourself. All right, so we're going to take 3 fifths. And I'm going to multiply my fifths by 6. And I'm going to take my sixes and I'm going to multiply those times 5. That gives me 18 thirtieths and 25 thirtieths. So 18 is less than 25. So 3 fifths is less than 5 sixths. All right, let's try B. Again, if you think you can do this one all by yourself, go for it. All right, so I've got two sixes and three eighths. I'm going to take my sixes and multiply them by eight. I'm going to take my eighths and multiply them by six. And now I have a common denominator. I have 16 48ths and 18 48ths. So because 16 is less than 18, two sixes are less than three eighths. All right, now we have 7 fifths and 10 eighths. So I have fifths and eighths. See if you can't try to finish this one all by yourself. Pause the video and do as much of it as you can by yourself and then come back and let's compare. Okay, so I'm going to take my sevenths, or excuse me, my fifths and multiply them by eight. 
and I'm going to take my eighths and multiply them by 5. And that gives me 56 fortieths and 50 fortieths. Well, because 56 is greater than 50, then 56 fortieths is greater than 50 fortieths. So 7 fifths is greater than 10 eighths. Okay, so I would really like for you to try D all by yourself. Pause the video, see what you can do, and then come back. Okay, so hopefully you tried to do this one all by yourself. And hopefully you took the thirds and multiplied them by five. And hopefully you took your fifths and multiplied them times three. So now you'll have a common denominator of 20 fifteenths and 18 fifteenths. So since they're both fifteenths, I can just compare the numerators. Since 20 fifteenths has a larger numerator than 18 fifteenths, 20 fifteenths is a larger fraction, so 4 thirds is larger than 6 fifths. Now it says use any method to compare the fractions. Record your answer using greater than, less than, or equal to. So that means we don't necessarily have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Let's take a look. We can use any method. So if you take a look at A, I'm looking at my numerators, and I have 3 and 7. There's nothing I can do to 3 to get to 7. And I'm looking at my denominators. I have 4 and 8. There is something I can do to 4 to get to 8. So let's go ahead and write this over here. So instead of multiplying my fourths times 8 and my 8s times fourth, fourths, I don't have to do anything to my 8s. I can just multiply 3 fourths times 2. And now I have 6 eighths. So now I have a common denominator. I have 6 eighths and 7 eighths. Well, 6 is less than 7, so therefore 3 fourths is less than 7 eighths. It would not have been wrong if you had used the same strategy that we used in the last problem. I want to show you what would happen. You may have already did this one by yourself, but if you had used the same strategy and you had multiplied your fourths times 8, and you had multiplied your eighths times four. This is just like what we were doing before. You would have 24 30 seconds and 28 30 seconds. Well, 24 is less than 28. You still would have got the less than side. The only difference is, is you would have done this extra step that I didn't have to do. So there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. It's just a little bit more work. All right, so let's take a look at B. All right, so I've got 6 and 3 for numerators, and I've got 8 and 5 as denominators. Choose a strategy, other than guessing, to solve this problem, and then come back. If you don't, can't figure out what to do, you can do it with me. All right, so I'm looking at 6, and I'm looking at 3, and I'm thinking, hmm, well, I can multiply 3 times 2, and that'll get me 6. So look at what happens if I do this. I can take my 3 fifths and multiply the numerator, and the denominator by 2 because remember you always have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number and that gives me 6 tenths. So now if I have 6 tenths here, so let's pretend this is 6 tenths. Well eighths are larger than tenths because remember the more parts you divide it into the smaller your parts. So if I have 6 eighths I have more than if I have 6 tenths. So 6 eighths is greater than 3 fifths. Again, if you used this strategy to solve this problem, you would still get the same answer. You would just have one extra step. So there's nothing I can do to 6 to get to 8, and there's nothing I can do to 4 to get to 6. So I'm going to use that same strategy that we learned today. I'm going to take my fourths, and I'm going to multiply them times 6. And I'm going to take my 6s, and I'm going to multiply them times 4, and then I will have a common denominator. So now I have 36 24 and I have 32 24 So because 36 is greater than 32, that means 6 4 is greater than 8 6. All right, so let's take a look at D. Again, there's nothing I can do to get from 8 to 9, and there's nothing I can do to 5 to get to 6. So I will have to find a common denominator by taking my 8 fifths and my 9 sixths 
and multiplying my fifths times sixths and multiplying my sixes times five. And then that will give me 48 thirtieths and 45 thirtieths. So now I have a common denominator because 48 is greater than 45, 8 fifths is greater than 9 sixths. Now let's take a look at number four. Explain two ways you have learned to compare fractions. Prove evidence using words, pictures, and numbers. Okay, so today we have learned two different ways to compare fractions. The first thing we learned is that we can use an area model and we can find common units and then compare the number of units. So let's go ahead and say that. Okay, I'm gonna type because I can type faster than I can write. I can draw two area models and find common units, then compare the number of units in each model. Okay, that was one way, okay? I can also find common units by using multiplication and comparing the two fractions. Okay, so now we have to use, let's use a real quick model here. So let's say we're comparing two-thirds. Let's use an easy one so we don't have to work too hard. The smaller the numbers, the easiest will be. So let's say we wanted to compare two-thirds to three-fourths. Okay, so let's take our little model here, and let's divide this into thirds. And let's shade two. And then let's take this one and divide this one into fourths horizontally. We have to shade three. Okay, so we have to take the thirds and make them into fourths. And we have to take the fourths and make them into thirds like this. This model's kind of hard to read. All right, so I've got eight out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 over here. And here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 out of 12 here. So 8 twelfths is less than 9 twelfths. I can also use multiplication to do the exact same process. So I'm going to take my thirds and I'm going to multiply them by 4. And I'm going to take my fourths and I'm going to multiply them by three. And now I have eight twelfths and nine twelfths. Okay, so this is two different ways. This way you draw a model and can just count the number of parts that's shaded, or here you can use multiplication. So these are the same two ways that we learned today. I find the multiplication to be more effective and to be less time consuming. The model is much easier done on paper than it is on this computer, but it also works. You have to decide which one you like the best. So when you get ready to find your exit slip today, I want you to come back and look at your strategies and your problem set and see if you can do it all by yourself.